pleasure to be here, and definitely I cannot follow in the footsteps of any of our speakers, uh, so I'm just going to try my best. Um, I want to say that um, eight years ago when we started the Council of Ex-Muslims, when uh, there was news that our organization was being launched, we got lots of emails and threats uh, saying that you cannot ever leave Islam. Once you're born a Muslim, you have to stay a Muslim. And the thing that we said at the launch was that, well, we are leaving, watch us as we leave, and we're going to continue to pave the way for many others to leave as well. And I think if you look at the situation today compared to eight years ago, there is what I would call a tsunami of atheism, thanks in large part to social media, but also to the work of organizations like ours, and of course our brave dissenters and heroes from across the world, from Iran, Bangladesh, Pakistan, to Somalia, Saudi Arabia, and so on. Along the way, we've had many pragmatic friends who've told us um, you know, that our organization and the work that we do are, is unnecessarily provocative. And as I've said before, it might be provocative, yes. It needs to be provocative for sure, but unnecessary, not at all. In an age of ISIS where people are killed for thinking as they wish, Muslim and non, in an age when people are threatened and abused and intimidated for just living in the way that they choose, this is the least that we can and must do to challenge the Islamist movement and to defend our free thinkers. If we're not allowed to leave, if we can be killed for leaving, well then we refuse to submit, we refuse to stay silent. And until the day that we can shout out our atheism and our apostasy from every rooftop, until then, doing so is a historical task and necessity. I think one of the things that's important to realize, remember is that the very act of blasphemy and apostasy, whilst it's looked down in many situations, that we really must celebrate them. It is important to celebrate apostasy, to celebrate blasphemy, and to celebrate our apostates and blasphemers. They are our heroes. And while we stand here today talking about this issue, we have to remember that so many of our heroes, Muslim and ex-Muslim, who have dared to dissent are languishing in prison, are facing flogging and execution in many, many countries across the world. And unless we realize that apostasy and blasphemy are acts for celebration, we can never honor them to, to the level that they deserve and that they need. You know, what we've shown, and what people like Raif Badawi, like Roya Nobacht in Iran, like the 84 Bangladeshi bloggers have shown, is that the demand for the right to blaspheme, to be apostates, is not a Western demand, it's a very human one, it's a very universal one. And as we've mentioned many times before, no one knows the need to be able to blaspheme, to be able to have secularism, to be able to speak freely, more than people who are living under the boot of the religious right. I do want to end by just saying that yes, we are living in a terrible age, an age of ISIS, but also we are living in a tremendous age of resistance and dissent. And because of social media, we are able now to see our many, many dissenters. And it's important for us always to remember them, to defend them, and to stand for their right to blaspheme and be apostates, no matter what. I do want to end, as Gita did, in defense of migrants. You know, migrants are people who are voting with their very feet. And they are the best kind of dreamers that we could possibly wish for. The fact that anyone thinks that they can survive that journey and to actually dream that they can live a better life. These are the people that we need and we must support. And I think as Gita said, they are the people who will be alongside us, in front of us in the fight against Islamism and the religious right. So we must defend migrants unequivocally. So thank you for coming. And I look forward to another eight years of more blaspheming and apostasy and everything else that's corrupt and uh, immoral. Immoral. immoral, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Ramazzi.